Policies in Spacelift are the guardrails for your deployments. Policies are based on the Open Policy Framework and are written in the Rago language. Policies can manage all aspects of your deployment workflow, including account login, stack access, run and task approval, trigger behavior, as well as analyze resources and make policy decisions during each stage of your deployments. Let's take a look. Here I am on the Policies page within Spacelift. If I click on Add Policy, you can see we have a lot of boilerplate here to get you started, and then you can choose your type. As mentioned, we have several types of policies that you can use, and we're going to take a look at a few of them. So let's head back to our policy list. As you can see, we have a task and run approval policy, which requires approvals on certain types of tasks and deployment runs. And then we have a policy here that ensures that any deployed EC2 instance is only a T2 micro and nothing larger. Let's take a look at these. So as you can see, I'm within a stack here. This stack will deploy an AWS EC2 instance and some network dependencies. I'm going to click on Trigger to run this stack. All right, so let's take a look. First up, the approval policy was analyzed in the first phase of our deployment. And if we take a look at the task and run approval, we can see that it only requires approval if the state is an unconfirmed or the run type is a task. As you can see down here, we were not in the unconfirmed state yet. Now, once we get to the top and the plan has run, we are now in an unconfirmed state and the approval policy is undecided. Now, as you can see, this requires one approval and zero rejections. So what we can do is we can click on review, add our comment, just like so, and approve it. And of course, if we were to reject, it would fail the run. So since that is now approved, everything is going to run and deploy properly as soon as we click on confirm. Now the other policy, which is the instance size policy, checks our Terraform code or whichever code you're using for your deployment and ensures that our instance is a t2.micro. So it denies if the instance is not a t2.micro. Now what we can do is we can use this policy workbench here to test that code. So if I change this to t2.large and click on simulate, we can see that this would have been denied. Resource, and it provides the resource address, is the improper type. If I change that back to micro and click on simulate, we get an empty set of brackets here, indicating that everything is good to go. As you can see, the plan policy was allowed. So everything is good, it passes our policies, so we can click Confirm and Deploy. Now, if we wish to destroy our resources, we can use a stack task. If I head to Tasks, as you can see here, we have a Task and Run policy. And if the run type is a task and the command is not ls, it's going to require an approval. So if I were to perform an ls task, I click perform again right there, which will run ls within the container that launches our Terraform executable. You can see that the approval policy is immediately approved without a problem because ls is within the approval list. Now if I head back and run the Terraform destroy auto approve task, we see here that since it's not in our allow list, it requires an approval. So I can click review, destroy resources, and choose to approve or reject. All right, so as you can see, Spacelift policies are incredibly powerful and can help you maintain the guardrails that your compliance requirements expect.